In 2020, 846 people applied for St. George's Graduate Medical School. They interviewed 304 of those people and gave out 123 offers. The purpose of this video is to help you get one of those offers. What are you telling me? My name is Marius Hugh and I'm a third year new bucket hat at South... I am a third year graduate medical student at Southampton University. In this video, we're going to break down the application process for St. George's Graduate Medical School. We're gonna run through the GAMSAT requirements and how the course is set up, and then we're gonna give you a few uh, little interview tips as well. As ever, if you only wanna watch one section of this video, then feel free to skip around as you wish. So firstly, just a bit of background on St. George's Graduate Medical School. Essentially, the first thing to mention about St. George's that makes it very different to other medical schools is that it is a fully health sciences university. By that I mean if you go to St. George's, every single man and his dog is going to be studying some form of health sciences. And this makes St. George's unique. It's also an extremely old medical school. So in terms of how the graduate program is set up, because this can differ between different universities, for the 80 or so people that enroll on the graduate program at St. George's, you do a bespoke first year, and then you're siphoned back into third year of the undergraduate program. So here's quite a helpful schematic that kind of summarizes what I'm going on about. Essentially, your year one on the graduate program is equivalent to their first two years. And so effectively, they've condensed the material or skipped out certain bits of the course that they don't feel is very relevant. They've condensed the material into one year and then they expect that you'll be up to the level to go back into the normal third year. Georges are quite gassed about their jargon and if you speak to anyone from Georges on the undergrad or the graduate course, they'll always be going on about T year this, P year that, F year, you know what I'm saying, all sorts of letters. I used my mediocre intellect to try and decipher what this is all about. So essentially T year is the normal third year of the undergraduate course and it is your second year. And it is called T year because it stands for transition. And it's supposed to represent your transition from a fully clinical science based teaching method to a fully clinical placement style of teaching where you're always on the wards or in theatres or something just learning whilst being in the hospital. But in this T year you probably do a mixture of clinical placements and clinical science learning. P year is the one where you're just doing clinical placements. I'm a P boy right now you know what I'm trying to say. Big up the P boys and that. Right now I'm rotating through various different specialties like paediatrics, obstetrics and gynaecology, acute care, something else I don't even know. After that is F year or your final year where you do your assistantship and take your finals exams and your assistantship is essentially where you just go and hang around an F1 doctor trying to learn the job that you're going to be doing the following year. With all that said, let's talk about the undergraduate degree requirements for St. George's Graduate Medical School. On their website, it says that you can have any degree at 2-1 level. But is this actually true? What did the Freedom of Information request say? Their response stated that in 2020, there were 63 people uh, with a 2-1 offered a place on the course and 44 people were the first that were given a conditional offer. So clearly they don't rate people that have got firsts more than people that have got 2-1s in contrast to somewhere like Birmingham or Butts in the London. They also say that you can have any type of undergraduate degree, whether that be biomedical sciences or a humanities type subject. They don't discriminate on the basis of having sufficient biomedical science within your undergraduate degree. However, I could not find a freedom of information request confirming this, and actually I submitted one myself, so I'll get back to you on the details of that. So if you have a 2-1 in any degree and you're considering going to St. George's for graduate entry medicine, then you're going to have to take the GAMSAT. This is a five and a half hour beast of an examination that tests you in three different domains, reasoning in the humanities, written communication, and your biological and A-level science nows. Of course, what we really wanna know is what score is gonna be getting me that interview you know what I'm trying to say what score is going to get me through the door at St George's and the most reliable way to work out the cutoff for next year is by looking at the previous year's lowest GAMSAT scorer who achieved a unconditional or conditional offer in 2020 the lowest GAMSAT score that received an offer was 58 average across the three domains so basically if you get around 58 or above then you're not going to be wasting your application by applying to St George's you're most likely to get an interview you'll most likely rank in the top you know 123 people that apply and you'll probably get an interview obviously as long as you satisfy those other basic requirements like getting a 2-1 oi but Marius I got a 2-1 in English and I got 65 in the GAMSAT why didn't I get an interview yeah I ain't got a clue to be honest <laughs> all right so if you've been watching the hours upon hours of graduate medical school application content I've been putting on YouTube then you will know that work experience is important to some graduate medical schools basically St George's don't give a crap now they actually do but what they have said is that in these COVID times they appreciate that it has been 
difficult to acquire the sufficient work experience that they would normally require. However, they still want you to have some perspective on the realities of medicine so you're not going in blind. And essentially they provided some resources on their website to give you that kind of insight. And I will link those in the video description for you. So if you've got a 2-1 and you've averaged 58 or over in the GAMSAT, then you're probably going to be invited to an interview at St. George's for graduate medicine. In terms of what the day was actually like, it sounds like they were very welcoming bunch. You meet with some um, current university students uh, studying at St. George's and you get tea and coffee and you can ask them, you know, whatever you want to ask them about the course. You can also ask for their honest opinion on whether they like the course or not. But to be honest, for me, like I was going into all my interviews, meeting with these current students and asking them this question. And to be honest, I didn't really care about the answer. Even if they say their experience has been absolutely dog crap, I'm still going to want to try and get an offer for that medical school because it's such slim pickings out here and I know I want to be a doctor. So to be honest, it doesn't really matter what you say. You're not gonna put me off going here. But I guess this is for the super nerds that get all four offers and you know, can just you know select the one that they feel like is the best, you know, the best experience for them. So in my research, I uncovered at least 10 sample questions for graduate medicine at St. George's. And I'm already getting anxiety that these videos are like 15 to 17 minutes long. So we're gonna just answer a couple, two, three of them. Firstly, it'd be worth thinking about the question, why do you want to go to St. George's? Well, what is actually unique about St. George's is the fact that that it's a fully health sciences institution and obviously there are pros and cons to this however you could ham up the pros for example you're going to be immersed in the medical world every time you go out for dinner you're trying to see a mate playing some call of duty but actually you're going to be talking about medicine the whole time so clearly this is going to be good for your medical education in the long term the other thing you could say is that you like the way they teach the course they do some problem-based learning in the first couple of years this is something we do at the best graduate medical school in the universe Southampton and it's something that I've really enjoyed actually because you get together in a group of you know eight to ten students you discuss um, you know pathology biomedical sciences within a clinical context and it's actually a really interesting way to learn the other cool thing about st. George's is that it is based in Tooting so by definition it is a London University they want to hear you gas them up and say because this is a London University uh, it's associated with London hospitals that serve the local population and this is a much more multicultural and culturally diverse uh, local population than many other medical schools. Because of this, you're going to see and be exposed to a greater breadth of pathology and, and disease. And this is going to greatly enhance your learning and allow you to become an excellent doctor. On their website, it seems like they also want you to know a little bit about the history of St. George's. So essentially it was founded in the 1750s, so 200 years before my own, my very good own medical school. They've been training doctors for like 250 years. And so obviously they've got some pioneering dons that have walked through those corridors before you. For example, John Hunter who was some pioneering anatomist and widely considered the father of modern surgery apparently uh, took some courses at St. George's. Also there was like a group of boss men there who were anatomists and they pretty much wrote Grey's Anatomy. They also like created the smallpox vaccine but yeah there's bare stuff and I'll link the page that I got this all from in the description and I just recommend having a read and memorizing some of those key points because clearly they want you to gas them up about the history of the institution. The next thing it might be worth looking at is some recent uh, medical advancements. BBC Health is probably a good place to start reading about this, but I'll just give you one that I read about recently. So you can't escape a chat about medical advancements without talking about artificial intelligence. AI is already revolutionizing medicine and it's being used in diagnosing and triaging um, and just making the system much more efficient. I think as doctors, it's only gonna become a bigger part of our lives in the future. And so it'd be worth learning a little bit about it now. So in Moorfield Eye Hospital in Roehampton, they're training an AI system. It's actually Google's DeepMind AI system. They're showing this thing thousands of CT scans of eyes with the pathology labeled. The thing is learning how to recognize and diagnose things from these CT scans. And so the hope is that kind of the diagnosing and triaging bit of, of the process can be left to the AI algorithm. And then doctors are gonna have more time to spend with their patients doing the more human aspect of medicine. That obviously is irreplaceable by AI. So it's gonna keep me in a job, keep my pockets lined, you know, like that. The next thing it might be worth thinking about is what is your motivation for the career? What is your why as Simon Sinek? would write. Thing is, it's a hella long degree. By the time you've graduated, you will have been studying for at least seven years in higher education. This will have many ups, but will also have many downs, and you are going to need a strong why to keep you going during those down moments. So when I was going through this, I was obviously reflecting on why I would actually want to do medicine in the first place. And this is basically what I came up with. I want to apply my intellectual interest, which is biomedical sciences, in a field 
that helps people and will push me to develop into the kind of person I want to become, someone skilled, reliable, and useful. To end this extraordinarily long video, I'll leave you with a quote from Nietzsche that I read in a book called Man's Search for Meaning. He who has a why can bear almost any how. That's basically it for St. George's. We're gonna go through a few more um, St. George's classic interview questions in the next video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was reasonably useful and hopefully see you in the next one. Cheers.